Hi, I'm Michael Bookwalder, and you join me here today at Medlands Fishery. Feeder fishing the last few years on big qualifiers has kind of changed a bit now. We're on carp venues such as Medlands, Barst and Larford, where the margins have become really, really important. In fact, they're vital to qualify, and you've got to be able to feed them right and feed them at the right time. So I've brought you here today to show you how to fish them, how to feed them, in my eyes, the correct way, and try and give you a few tips. It's really simple, but you can make it really difficult by doing the wrong things. You want the fish on the bottom feed and you don't want bait flowing everywhere. So I'll try and show you a few tips now to hopefully see you well in the next match or maybe put more fish on the bank if you pleasure fishing. I'm going to go through now when I'd use this tactic of using the big bosher down the edge. It's become prevalent the last few years, places like Barston, particularly Larford and Medlands, that it's really important to catch them big carp late on. It makes a massive difference between coming third or fourth in your zone or winning your zone. But there's a few key factors you've really got to think about. Years ago, we used to start feeding the margins early doors, start the match, start feeding it bosh, basically try and build a swim up. Nowadays, it's kind of not like that. Like just for a quick example, last year on the Super League at Larford Lakes, we never fed it until half an hour to go. Quickly, one big feeder fall down, strike it out, straight over the top of the method. We're looking for one fish between 12 and 15 pound. So depending on what venue you're on, you've got to think about the way you're going to feed it. If you're on a venue with millions and millions of fish, then maybe start halfway through. But I've, as a general rule, don't ever tend to feed it until at least two and a half to three hours in. And then it'll be a case of just put one down full of pellets and corn, however you want to feed it. I'm going to use pellets, I'm going to use corn and hemp and ground bait here today. Try and get them on the bottom, keep them there. Basically one of them in, the big key I'll show you in a second, is when you feed the feeder, it hits the bottom, none of this straight away, dunk, 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 empty it. It needs to hit the bottom and it needs to empty in a pile of bait on the bottom, so you've left with one pile. I'm only trying to attract one fish at a time and catch one fish at a time. I don't want to peg with rammed full of carp. I'm getting liners and bits and pieces. I want to hook one, catch it, set a trap for the next one. So I'm putting it in, it's hitting the bottom. I'm leaving it like 15 seconds and people look at you and think, well, why are you doing that for? But I want that feeder to empty, the ground bait to break down and the feeder to become, all the bait to become loose. And when I give it a quick dunk, I'm then emptying that in a pile there. I'm doing it so accurately using a 12 foot rod, 12 foot eight rod. So when I swing it out, it's the same spot. So when I swing the method out, I'm virtually on exactly the same spot, just making a trap as opposed to making a big area to feed on. I use a big bosher like that just for the fact that you can put virtually no weight on the bottom. It's like 20 gram of weight on there. All the weight's in the bait, so you don't need to cast out. You're just swinging it underarm. I want to put a method over the top of it, and a 30 gram that one is, but it's the big, it's a large one. So when I go over the top of it and put a pile of ground bait on my hook bait, I want it to be a big bait, big fish, big bait, big hook baits, big hooks. So everything's geared towards getting that one bite and landing it. I don't want to fish a size 14 hook. I'm using a size 10, real proper gaff. I want to hook the fish and get them out. Rod wise for me, it's really important. I don't think, like in my personal opinion, you should fish your rod any shorter than 12 for eight. With that, I can swing it out. Literally, I'm fishing, I can fish 20 meters down the bank with that, or 20, 20 meters, 20 foot down the bank with that. I'm swinging it out. I'm in the same spot every time. Put my rod on the rest and I then go on got quick release drag here what you don't want to do is have your rod tight so when the bait's down there i'm then slacking off my clutch i'm letting the line come off my tip and hang down to the water i'm trying to have it completely completely slack so the line goes from my tip onto the bottom and hopefully lays across the bottom trying to avoid spooking any carp when you're fishing a pole it's so obvious that you catch a few fish and you hook one and there's like a few bow waves come out your peg so by having the line on the bottom i'm trying to avoid doing this even to the point where I've thought about using back leads, like Taylor making a, a something out of the carp weld, really. 
but I've not pl played with it yet. I need to spend more time doing it. But that's the kind of effect you're trying to get. You want you want to basically have no line show. It's no fish can hook it, spook themselves. It's really really important that for me. And again, with the quick drag on there, once the fish has hooked itself, you don't want to pick up and the fish go bow off at your peg. You want the fish to hook the feeder and run out your peg before you pick up. So by having the quick drag that's on the intensity, 720, it runs out the peg. I can pick it up five, six seconds later when it's out the peg and hopefully I'm not going to serve the bait too much. The biggest reason for that for me is I've got the bait on the bottom. I don't then want a carp kicking up and all the bait going everywhere and bait all through the columns. I basically want to try and get it out the peg and then when I feed again, I'm in exactly the same spot on top of the same trap and keep repeating the process. But the biggest thing I think you need to play with with your fishing doing it is I really think timing's, if timing is massive. It's like it doesn't work at the wrong time. Most venues like here at Medlands, the carp come in last half hour, 40 minutes, and you can really do a massive way. I remember watching Andy Powers on the Golden Rod final a couple of years ago, going maybe into the last hour, had 50 or 60 pound, and end up winning a section of 130. Uh, so when you get it right, it's a devastating tactic and more and more important nowadays. I'm going to go through my bait now for today's session. It's really simple. With this kind of fishing down the edges, you make it as complicated as you want to make it. For me, I'm just going to use ground bait today. Use match method marine. As simple as tip it in the, in the bucket. I'm going to mix the full two kilos up because one of a good day's fishing. First top tip though for today is you get a free feeder in here. So somewhere in here is the feeder. Don't go blending it up into your ground bait. It's not ideal. Put it aside, we'll use that later. I'm not gonna mix it with water to start with. I wanna try and create something down the edge that's a bit different, something to sort of draw the carp in with. So use F1 corn. What I do is I just basically tip the water straight in. You get a lot of juice in there. It's been, it's been soaking in corn for a few months or whatever. It's the flavor's in there. So I put that in there, make sure I don't tip any corn in. Horns then going to go into a meat pot there to feed. Because down the edge fishing, I like fish to be eating the bait. I want to put on the hook, so I'm going to put a lot of corn in. I'm also going to put in some hemp juice. All carp anglers around the country, whether they're fishing for small fish or big fish, they feed those big particles of hemp, one of the mainstays. So that goes in too. Let me drill. Slow set in. Give it a quick mix. As with all fish meal ground baits do take on quite a bit of uh, water and moisture in there. So I'm to a point now where it just about binds together. So literally going to get enough of the basin to cover my feeder. Right? I don't want the boshing one to be like this. I'm going to put a couple in there. And I'll come back to that in a second. The rest of it I'm just going to fit the water in here to mix it down with. We'll give that a blend up. Put that aside for a second. This is the one that probably got 30 feeders worth in here, not a lot, it's just a nice little amount. But I'm trying to make it when I put a method feeder down there, that ball was a bit different to everything else. I'm trying to make something that stands out so the fish come straight on it and hopefully pick up my bait. I'm going to be using Power Scopex boilies on the hook and wafters, so I'm going to try and make the ground bait smell a bit like it. Put a bit in there. I'm going to do it with a drill here though, really, really gently. I don't want my hands covered in it and all sticky and everything covered in stickiness. So I'm literally just going to bend it through quickly, slow, like that. Makes it go so sticky and changes the smell of it totally. Straight away, that's binding together loads better now. It really smells of Scopex. A bit more water in there. So that there now, that's what I'm going to use exclusively on the feeder. I'm not going to put any of that in through the bosher. I'm just going to use that on the feeder now. It gives a little pile of bait that's got a different smell over the top of that and hopefully the carp will hone straight on in it. Obviously through the bait up feeder, I want to put some particles down. I used to use pellets, but they're very, very light pellets and they waft everywhere. So now I'm trying to put a couple of piles of bait down when the fish go on it and stay there. And I don't want bait floating everywhere. I know ground bait does waft around a bit, but I want a bit mainstay of bait on the bottom. So I'm going to use that there. There's probably best part of two pints of bait there. We'll quite easily get through that. 
not opening them too because I don't need to. I can just leave them there if I need to open them. They last for years on the shelf, so if I need to open them, I can do. If not, they stay as they are. And the best thing about this is if I don't use this, it goes in a little bag, goes home in the freezer. Hook bait wise, what the acrylic squid, I'm not using wafters because I think that down the edge I want the fish to pick up a bait that's a bit heavier with tails coming in and stuff moving about. I want a bait on the bottom so you don't try and hook on the outside of the mouth. So I'm going to use bottom bait as opposed to wafters there. I did bring some small ones in case it's a bit hard. Every now and then you do try and catch a, maybe catch some skimmers and bream down the edge. So I've got some small ones as well just in case. Really simple bait setup. You haven't got to make it complicated. And uh, let's go and put it to good use. Well, we put a bit of bait in now. Just put two big boshes in. Give it 10 minutes. So we're going to have our first put down there now. Let's hopefully it's going to go flying around. I'm going to start off with a 8 mil bandom sinker. It's obviously quite a heavy bait and uh, it's not going to get plucked off by the skimmers or roach that's bound to be there as well because on the commercials nowadays there's obviously a million roach in each one. I'm just going to quickly load it with my uh, power scope it's ground additive in the ground bait. Give it a right good squeeze because it's going to break down pretty quickly. Simple as that. I'm going to show you the benefits now of using a 12 foot rod, 12 foot 8 rod. I'm going to lower it in. Literally a case of swinging it out. It's a surface. I'm going to take the bail arm off. Peel it off. Don't want, do not want to move that feeder in the slightest. I'm going to get all the way back to my rod rest. Set down there. And now I'm not even going to tighten up to that. I've got line everywhere around there now. But what I want it to do is it's going to sit vertically off there. I'm going to quick do me quick drag on the reel. So I'm free spooled now. So if I do get a fish, I can talk to you guys now. It's going to go zipping out the peg. The big importance, like I said before, is the line. Is now my line's going to sit down off the water there and just curl round on the bottom, hopefully. Any fish that come in a peg, bear in mind, we're looking for fish that 12 to 15 pound, a lot of them will be down the edge. You don't want to spook them. They're specimen sized fish, really, compared to what we normally catch. So that's a really, really vital tip. So you've got a bit of tow here now. So I'm just going to quickly put my tip under the water just to sink that last bit of line to the surface. I'm not moving it, anything like that. That's it now. My line now off my tip is dropping vertically down into the water. And if you're going to get a bite, you're not going to miss it because it's going to hook you. And normally, nine times out of ten, they hook and bolt. So it's going to fly off and my reel will go screaming round and we'll pick up the great big carp on the end. I've only put two feeder falls down at the start with. What I don't want to do is go in and put like seven, eight, nine, ten feeder falls down there thinking I'll put a pile of bait in and the fish will come on it. Just put that two feeder falls down there. Use this uh, feeding feeder. So what's that? Two, two good big handfuls. It's more than enough to attract a fish in the peg and hopefully leave enough bait there when the small fish peck around it and stuff with the corn and hemp that the big carp will come in and be on it. So I wouldn't give it more than a sort of 10 minute chuck down there because you're going to know if there's a fish there. You're going to get an indication or a bite pretty much instantly. It's not one of them places where you chuck out have a 20 minute wait like you would do if I was cast into the middle. Really, really positive tactic. And if the fish are there, you generally get a bite straight away. So 10 minutes maximum. If I don't get a fish in 10 minutes, I'm going to put two more of them on top of it and I'll go back on my main line and concentrate out there. Like I say, when they do rock up, nothing beats it. They say proof is in the pudding. Don't get much more pudding than that one. A common carp down the edge, probably nudging towards 17, 18 pound. Gave a massive fight. 
Couldn't even see the fish in the edge, no tail patterns, nothing dropped down there, slack lined it. 10 minutes later, off the rest it went. Absolutely ferocious bite. If I didn't have the quick drag on, definitely would have lost my rod or broke me. I let it go out the peg. And what an awesome, awesome fish. These Medlands carp fight like mad. Get out there and try it. It's definitely a match winning tactic and something I plan to use a lot more and perfect a lot more. Let's get him back and hopefully go and catch another one.